Welcome. We have been waiting for you to tune in to hear tales of Prince Edward Island, a place of history and some mystery. You may be surprised by the true stories that have been unearthed and brought to life by our radio dramas. We invite you to settle into a comfortable chair and let the voices and sounds trigger your imagination as you hear the following dramatic story. The Grave Digger. It was early October, 1957. Raymond McKinnon was a schoolboy growing up in the sleepy town of Summerside, Prince Edward Island. He was an ambitious young man, always on the lookout for a way to make a few dollars. Opportunity came to call one dark, rainy afternoon. Is that you, Ray? Yeah, Mom. What's to eat? I'm starved. Raymond McKinnon, how many times have I told you not to drop your school books on the hall table? Eat quickly. Frank Rowe called earlier to say he needs your help digging a grave at People's Cemetery for a funeral tomorrow. Mmm, great. I can use the money for the new model I saw. Take the cookie with you. With the sun going down early these October evenings, there won't be much time to get the job done. People's Cemetery is the Protestant cemetery in Summerside. It is located on McEwen Road on the outskirts of the town, and its size and stillness frightened Ray, though he never openly admitted this. He was always tense, walking between the rows of tombstones, anticipating that, at any moment, someone or something could appear from behind the granite slabs. On this afternoon, he saw Frank Rowe, the, the cemetery caretaker, waiting for him in an area of the burial ground that he had assumed was long occupied. Thanks for coming, Ray. This sore shoulder is a real handicap to me these days. You're, milk You're welcome, Mr. Rowe. This is going to be a hard grave to dig. It right there in the middle of two old ones. We only have an arm length to spare on either side. Ugh. Oh, Lord. It feels as though red-hot knives are being driven into my shoulder. You're going to have to continue alone, boy. But we're at least two feet down, and you should easily be able to get the other two. Thankfully, they no longer require six-foot graves. Oh, Lord, I need to get home and get the missus to put some liniment on my shoulder. Keep digging till dark. But you will likely have to come tomorrow at first light and finish the job. You're going to leave me here alone? Ah, oh, nothing to be scared of, Ray. Everybody here is dead. Though there was that time I thought I heard scratching from inside the casket when I came to fill in the grave. Scared me silly. But when I had the undertaker reopen the coffin, the body was lifeless. But better safe than sorry, I say. Now take care not to interfere with the graves on either side. There's nothing to be scared of. Everyone here is dead. Nothing a dead fellow can do. Oh. Stop looking at me, you evil buggers. Go find another tree in which to roost. That's it. I'm out of here. I'll just have to come early in the morning. Ray carefully exited the grave from one end. With only the newly risen moon as his guide, he hightailed it for home, admitting to no one his fear. Upon his return, very early the next morning, the moon was still in the sky, its pale light reflecting off the white tombstones and casting shadows. Ray could see the crows roosting in the now naked trees, their heads tucked beneath their wings. A thin white mist was rising from the ground. He felt a chill in his bones, though he was uncertain whether it was from the crisp autumn morning or the task at hand. <sighs> this place is no less eerie in the morning, but at least the sun will rise soon. Ray, 
What the dickens, Ray? You look like you've seen a ghost. Uh, didn't see him. Didn't see him. Felt him. He grabbed the back of my leg, just reached out from the next grave and grabbed me. Now, Ray. Honest, Mr. Rowe, he grabbed me. He grabbed me. Calm yourself, boy. We'll go have a look. Oh, don't make me go back there. Please, Mr. Rowe. You have no choice, boy. Fear has to be faced. Now let's go see who or what grabbed you. By the time the two had returned to the graveyard, the sun was climbing in the sky, and the crows had begun their morning chatter. Frank led the way to the freshly dug grave with Ray trailing behind. Oh, you'll have to look, Mr. Rowe. I can't look in. <laughs> Oh, 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 come see your ghost, Ray. It's Good Island Clay that gave way from the corner of the grave. It grabbed your leg. The arm-length graves are still at peace. This'll be our secret, Mr. Rowe, please? Of course, Ray. <laughs> of course, Ray. Mr. Rowe kept his promise and never once revealed Ray's story though he was often seen quietly at work in the cemetery when suddenly a smile would spread across his face and laughter break forth from his lips. He was even heard to mutter on occasion, Ah, Ray, it was good for a laugh. Mr. Rowe kept his word and never told a soul. It was Ray himself in later years when he could see the humor in the situation who revealed his graveyard story. The narrator was Stuart Smith. The mother was played by Karen Slater. Ray was Dan Casley. Frank Rowe was played by Vernon Campbell. Our musician today was Christine Anderson Gallant. Recording artist, Peter Gallant. Foley's, Krista Carruthers, Jamie Webster, Alexander Gallant, Sabrina Webster. Introduction by Lowell Husis. Script by Marlene Campbell. Brought to you Port of Canadian Heritage.